something has been subtly fed to us, it does not taste nice. This is by LM Dumizulu dealing with the topic before the God fiction took over the earth. Have you ever heard of the God fiction? What is it all about? The God fiction took over the earth. Is it something that has been brewed and fed humanity? Who did that? Before we share our opinion about it, let us remind each other that before the God fiction took over the earth, our ancestors were the only literate people in antiquity. They were the first to build empires and discovered every facet of civilization. Marvelous kingdoms like ancient Egypt, Ethiopia, Sumer, Mohenjo-Daro, the Americas and all islands stand as living testimony to this. No wonder the newly arrived races on the earth want to claim these. The biggest questions are, how did they do it? And then what went wrong? And then can anyone know it and start dealing with this subtlety? This will be answered soonest. Now back to the God fiction conundrum. From a book that every person of African melanin, black or brown ancestry must uh, possess, we read the following concerning the definition of the God fiction. You are going to rediscover solid proof on how another life template was crafted around an illusion we call God. It is a fiction. This God fiction creates spell like powerful, emotionally manipulated personal beliefs it is this template that is now locking the majority into a single gyratory mode. Convincing images, crowd mentality, promises and distorted history eventually dominate our thinking, yet incapacitates us from fine-tuning our discerning natural gift that allows us to access other life frequencies, realities or dimensions. We share you the link you can use to read some more from this wonderful, awesome book from Amazon. Time to think uh, before uh, the God fiction took over the earth. For those prone to spending some time thinking about the meaning of life, realize this ultimate question has troubled millions since the beginning of conscious thoughts in humans. It seems inherent in our nature to ask questions such as, where did we come from? How did I get here? What's my purpose on earth? Where do I go when I die? What's the meaning of all this? Unfortunately, the answers are not free. Let's share interesting news today. Our new book, which has just been released, just out a new book entitled Before the God Fiction Took Over the Earth. You can read some more and you can get it from Amazon, published by Prestige Rabbi L.M. Dumizul. Happy days before the God Fiction took over the earth. We are going to deal with what is the God fiction and what is it all about and is it about to be repeated? How do we escape it? Why should you read this book? It is clear we are seriously being manipulated every nanosecond of our existence. Though we naturally resist upon hearing or learning about this, we are repetitively breathing life into a fictitious idea. But why should I read uh, this book? You must ask. Let us briefly try to answer that. Please read this and digest it. It's one of the clues of many, many clues given in this book. First, here is a brief history of God, which millions of believers decide to gloss over very fast. The father figure prayed to by millions today is God featuring in our lives today, whether is the Hebrew Yahweh or Jehovah or Elohim or a Lord or Canaanite Baal comes from Indo-Iranian, then Indo-Aryan, and finally Indo-European creative mind. God was created by humans. There is a date when he was configured into the date we think we know today. Around 2500 years BCE, Zeus Peter, Father Zeus, Dios Patera, otherwise known as God the Father or Allah, image so the word god is about 2500 years old you can visit this website and read some more 
God. In old English, God means supreme date, the Christian God. Image of a God. God like a person is from the Proto Germanic Guthan, source also of Old Saxon, Old Frisian, Dutch God. Old High German God. German God with a double T. Old Norse God. Gothic Gap, which is of uncertain origin, perhaps from Pi God, which is invoked like ghost. Source also of old Church Slavonic Zovo to call Sanskrit Huta invoked an epithet of Indra from root Geu to call to invoke. The notion could be divine entity summoned to a sacrifice. There is more shocking proof and more shocking evidence. Do you know that God had a wife before Mary? And their name is, we shall reveal it, other than Mary, the mother of Jesus. God had another wife before that. The archetype progressed from initially being paired with the goddesses, worshipped in the conquered lands as her husband. Go to this website again. The images given here of a bovine Yahweh paired with his wife Asherah, the ancient Hebrew love and fertility goddess and immortal tree of life. <laughs> there is more proof from the book before the God fiction took over the earth. This book is a scorcher. This book. Let's give more proof about Asherah. One verse, one verse from the Old Testament. In 2 Kings 21.7 the caved image of Asherah that he had made, he said, in the house of which the Lord said to David and to his son Solomon, in this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, I will put my name forever. So the Christians, the Jews, the Muslims, the believers, the scholars rush past that. But wait, now you realize that an image of Asherah is being put in the Jerusalem temple see that can you see that god and asherah his wife there is more we need to get here warning this is a book that carries a warning before you read it in this book before the god fiction took over the earth you come face to face with extremely provocative religious content if you are easily offended by self-evident facts, averse to uncluttered open observations, please proceed with caution. Read this book with this warning in mind. It's a loaded gun. It is clear we are seriously being manipulated every nanosecond of our life. And uh, we are breathing life into a fictitious entity crafted and built on idols. And the human mind and idols are very difficult to separate. The serious nature of such an inquiry should impel everyone to find solutions. This awesome book has 17 chapters packed to the brim and overflowing with data and information. Well-researched information. So we just give you a brief uh, about the first 11 chapters. Chapter 1, save yourselves first. Chapter 2, sparkling African spirituality. Chapter 3, Original Oldest Spirituality. Chapter 4, Who Am I? Chapter 5, Ancestral Life Manual. Chapter 6, Spirit Fashioned by Man. Chapter 7, What African Spirituality Offers. Chapter 8, Black Prophets. Chapter 9, Casting Lots is Biblical. Chapter 10, Modern Medical System African. Chapter 11, Christians idolatry plus many more let us sample a few tidbits of these chapters in chapter 1 save yourself first we read from the first line it says from the standpoint of full and an encumbered examination the biggest need of this hour in this and subsequent generations may be well that people of African ancestry all over the earth should be brought back to their unique, pristine, original, and indigenous African reality. We have been blinded by a fiction while least engaged in battles against many foes. We are in deadly combat of survival 
during the darkest hour of our existence as the first and original race on the earth. What the God fiction is doing is deadly. Reading this book will help you double and triple your ability to do more personal in-depth research, activate your totems, and engage in powerful thinking and creative output like our ancestors did. If by now you know that inside our true story, so-called history, is found the hidden explanations about the immense power of using African spirituality, you are also aware that we have fallen from the highest pinnacle ever attained by any humans on earth. Someone is enjoying the sweat of our ancestors and squandering our inheritance while we starve and mire in squalor and poverty. A few more. In chapter 2, sparkling African spirituality, modern subtle fantasies, emotionalized by current discordant and melodramatic fervent illusions, passes off as real spirituality in churches and other religions. Their soapy stimulus engulfs innocent minds, pounced by heavy sentimental music and too much hope instead of solutions. The promise of heaven induces an instant but fallacious hope. It is this hope that is mentally conditioning billions. It is also dubbed as faith and optimism founded on speculative certainty. The false visions of eternal life in paradise is cemented by powerful suggestions delivered from the pulpit. It goes on to share the true essence of African spirituality. Caution! In dealing with certain information and certain rituals you find in this book, please do not share them. That's all. Spirit is a type of energy. This section in chapter 2 answers the most hidden question that mystics, gurus, preachers, teachers skip. It is the soul spirit conundrum. The God fiction insinuates that you are born a sinner and if you do not follow its prophet or its man, you are bound for hell. It's a lie. There is something that is worse than hell. Some issues answered. Do we have both spirit or a soul? What part of us continues on after we die? And uh, how does that take place? What is the specific mechanism that allows us to have eternal life? And uh, what is life according to Christian spirituality? What is consciousness? Is a human being an embodied soul or a materialized spirit? If you read chapter 3 of this book, you might as well put that book away. And still, you would have gained heaps and much. It's a hot new book. Before the God fiction took over the earth, soft and hard copies are now available from Amazon. This is a thought-provoking new book. Read it today and get your copy from Amazon. Why should you actually read this book again? Because it offers you practical steps to restore your birthright. It will assist you in activating your identity. It will also give you the authority to reclaim and awaken your totems. And it will show you how to reconnect to your ancestry. There are prayers in this book. Diet issues dealt with in this book. It deals with energy and plenty, plenty more. You can get this book from the link given here from Amazon. This is the book that will help us to rise up again. Read it today because this book will answer many questions and will be a powerful weapon. This is Priest by L.M. Tumizulu of Hamiti Buru Ethics Maharifa Development Organization. Till we meet again, Tatenda, Siabonga, thank you, and course. Thank <laughs> you.